Hey guys, I'm Mitchell Kopelman with Habif Arigetin Nguyen, or, or HAW, whatever's easier for you. And I uh, appreciate uh, joining you here this morning out at uh, the Alpharetta ATDC location. One of the things that come up a lot with the crowdfunding is valuation. So does everyone in the room kind of think, like, you know what your company's worth today? Anyone have an idea what you think your company's worth? No one. Does anyone have an idea that if someone handed you a check, you got one person feels like you know what your company's worth. Does everyone have a number in their head that said if someone offered me X to sell my business today, I'd take it? Everyone has like, what's my number? Someone said, here, here's a check for, you know, is your, is your number 5 million? Is it a million? Is it 25 million? Is it 100 million? What's your number today? I know, I know you're not getting... My wife's number and mine are not remotely close. <laughs> <laughs> your, wife's, <laughs> your wife's number isn't the same as yours. Uh, let me guess, hers is a little higher? A little lower. A little a little lower. lower. Yeah, she wants less down. risk. Yeah, she wants out of the lower. risk. Yeah. Michael Horton had uh, suggested a number for me, for my company, at the stage we're in, based upon Atlanta and the, the traction right. and stuff like that. So he, he provided me a number well, for what this works. Sure, no, well, I can tell you that we, we have access really from our client base alone and because a lot of this is not published. A lot of angel investment like numbers are not published in a way that you would know what pre-money values are. But we happen to have an, you know, enough clients that we can sit with a company as, as you mentioned, your attorney sat with you and said, you know, this is a good pre-money valuation number where I think you can raise money. And we see what's going on. A lot of it has to do with not just the business plan and goals and the opportunity, but who is the management team? What's the management team's track record? How many people make up the management team? What do they bring to the table? That makes a huge difference in any valuation. The issue with valuation is you might say, well, how am I going to decide my valuation if I'm going to put this in front of 100,000 people? I might get a little more methodical in what it is versus sort of advice you know, do I want to go at, versus just casual advice from your accountant or your attorney, what do I actually want to do with this? So crowdfunding is going to hit the masses. These are not people that are avid angel investors today. In, all, in, in many cases, you might have uh, half a million people that have downloaded your app already for free, and they love it, and they use it and they see the potential of how good it is and they want to invest in your company, but they may not be savvy investors. Today, their only investments may be in their 401k plan into some mutual funds. They might have no direct investment experience. In my opinion, financially speaking, they probably have no business investing in an early stage startup company. And that's a long-term investment for a sophisticated investor, but they'll be able to invest. Someone making $100,000 a year probably doesn't have a lot of savings today. But they'll be able to invest $5,000 in your company, which is probably too big of a number. If they look at all their investments, that would be too big of a single amount to put in a s single security, single equity. I see someone from a brokerage house that does investing shaking and nodding and agreeing with me. You wouldn't put so much of that, of your, if you had $20,000 that you invested and 15 of that was in your retirement plan and that was spread into 10 mutual funds and probably had exposure to you know, 500 different securities, would you actually, does it make sense for you to now take $5,000 and put it in one company that's private, that's illiquid? Wouldn't make sense. It's not a good balancing of your assets. But they're going to do it, possibly. They might do it into your company. They're not going to have a clue from their experience. They won't have experience in knowing what the value your company maybe should be. So you have maybe an opportunity, OK? But it might cost you later. So you might come out with a much higher valuation to raise capital today, because uh, investors that are going to invest won't really have a notion whether that's high or low. You might say, I'm selling it for a dollar a share. Well, OK, what does that mean? Does that mean your valuation is a million dollars or $50 million? Most people that are not avid investors don't really think about the value of the total company. They just think, oh, the share price is a dollar. I'll invest in it now while it's just a dollar. They didn't think about how many shares are out there. You yourself may own 100,000 shares. <laughs> or you may own. 10 million shares, okay? So your company now has a 10 million pre-money value and you're selling stock for a dollar a share. And they're gonna get an early because it's only a dollar a share. You could price it at the penny a share and just change the number of shares. That might sound even more enticing to people.
So a lot of people, they're just looking at what's the share price when they're investing. This is the unsophisticated investor. Put yourself in their, in their shoes. So I, I anticipate there'll be a, a lot of variances, a lot of differences in valuation that's being used by companies when this comes live. And some of the people that invest in your company are doing it, are going to do it not because they're thinking they're going to make money in it, but they're doing it just why they're doing it with Kickstarter today. Just for the kick of it, pun intended. They like what you're doing. They, they, they just want to say that they are a shareholder. You know, if Facebook did something like this 10 years ago, maybe a lot of people would have joined in and maybe today they would be millionaires too, who knows. So what you might see are valuations that are very high in many cases in crowdfunding. So what happens when you raise money at a $50 million valuation as an early stage company and you raise half a million dollars through crowdfunding or a million dollars and you run a successful business, grow it and then you're now looking to raise 10 million to really grow it faster. And you have a professional investor that's gonna come in and say, hey, I'd love to invest. I know those guys invested at a 100 million or a 50 million dollar valuation, but I think today your company's worth about 30 million or 20 million, which means that's what we refer to in capital raise as down round. a down round, exactly. Yes. And so what happens to all the investors that came in, they get diluted even more so again, going back to some of the discussion I had earlier, why you might want to have provisions to buy them out, why you want them to be non-voting shareholders. So there's lots of issues that come up when you have a down round of investing. It happens all the time today with professional investors one after another. <coughs> but now when you're dealing with hundreds or thousands of shareholders and to some extent like anonymous people, you, know, you don't know who they are. They just happen to you know, find you on Facebook and end up at your crowdfunding page through the Jobs Act and boom, they're now your shareholder. They own, you know, 0.001% of the stock and now they're going to own 0.0001% of the stock after you raise money from a professional investor unless you buy them out. And now are you going to buy them out at a down round value or are you going to have in your documents that you're allowed to do that or are you going to have in your documents that you're going to be able to have to buy them out at at least their original cost? I mean, I would say you're going to be better off buying them out at the down round value. They're all going to have a capital loss on their investment. So that might be what happens. We've got some good news for you. What's the good news? <laughs> yeah, you've got a, you know, a tax deduction. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to give you cash and you get a capital loss. <laughs> so, you know, that, I'm, just, I'm just trying to share, you know, some different thoughts about what might happen with, with all of this. So some company, yeah. But, but you could use something like convertible debt, which doesn't you could. assign a value, right? You could use convertible debt. I don't know if the crowdfunding bill will allow you to use convertible debt, but I would assume it probably will. Okay. It's, a, it's a mechanism often used. Okay. And the convertible debt would likely have some type of return on it. Maybe you'll just add company option, you could pay the debt off with the return. That goes back to the the issue I mentioned earlier of maybe selling preferred stock with a small coupon. Do I have enough, am I getting enough return for my risk? But when you're dealing with people that don't invest a lot and aren't familiar with angel investment terms, you might be in the driver's seat. The company raising money might very well be able to dictate some of those terms and not have a lot of pushback like you would from an angel investor group or venture capital fund. Of course, you'll have to see if you have the traction What's going to attract people? I think the first couple of uh, fundraising efforts using the Jobs Act in the crowdfunding mechanism will be really interesting to see what is their valuation model? What type of um, protections are they going to give their shareholders? Are they going to give voting rights or non-voting rights? It will be real interesting to see the trends that come about as this becomes law. So you can think about whether you want to get a valuation firm to help you decide what that value is. You know, is there a concern that you pick a $100 million valuation out of the sky and then later these investors all sue you for overvaluing your company? Will you be able to have enough legal protections that you disclose to them financial information required under the act 
which candidly probably won't be that much information. You told them you were selling stock at a penny a share. The fact that it happened to be a $100 million valuation, they just didn't think to multiply a penny a share times, you know, a billion shares to figure out what your valuation was. So will you see a lot of litigation? I, I'm predicting five years after the Jobs Act goes live, we'll see a lot of class action lawsuits. So it's, it, it'll be an audience, you know, we got class action attorneys out there, they'll be able to figure out who are all the shareholders, okay, they go to the Facebook page, they like it, they then become friends with everyone on the Facebook page. Hey, I see you're also liking this same page or you've also downloaded this company's app and we're suing them because they valued their company $100 million with no reason when you invested five years ago. And now you're, the company just sold for $10 million. And meanwhile, you, you know, so you're getting pennies on the dollar and you invested at the $100 million valuation. You're getting 10 cents on the dollar on the, on the sale. We're going to do a class action lawsuit. I don't know if there's going to be any money to get. Well, that was, that was but, the question. So if you're unsuccessful going forward, that's not, you're, you're essentially have what a term I like is judgment proof. No <laughs> class action attorney is going to go after you because there's nothing to get. Well, I, but right. if you're successful, then what you've got to consider is there's a contingency. If you don't, you know, the people think that they're not getting evaluation, you can count on a class action lawsuit. You never know. Yeah, convertible debt finesse is the evaluation issue. Maybe, maybe not. <clears throat> what if they convert the security and you convert them, they get the ability to convert and... At the next round? At, well, they could, you could do it that way. Yeah, Maybe a very good sure. mechanism. Sure. Okay. So I like my last valuation method, the educated guess. That's, I'm, I'm not sure whether that's good or bad if you get into a problem with your investors. Out of all the evaluation methods, what would you say the percentage you used? Or just don't educate. Out of all evaluations, how many are educated guests? Percentage Most of them. I mean, if yeah. we have a valuation firm, many of you know Mike Blake, who runs our valuation practice that runs Startup Lounge. Okay? If you went to Mike and said, Mike, I'd like you to give me a valuation today because I want to go and approach some in the angel investors. How much should I, you know, price my company at? And give me a valuation report. How much would you charge me to do it? It's like, I'm not going to charge you to, to do that because it's not worth anything. If you show an investor, potential investor, here's the valuation report, so they write you a check, it's really irrelevant. You have something to sell, they're a potential buyer, you're going to have to negotiate what that price is. It doesn't matter what the valuation report says today, if you're dealing with you know, people. Pre-revenue pre, uh, pre companies. Yeah, or even post-revenue companies. A valuation report is helpful for maybe you to say, you know, this is why I think my company is worth this. But to use that to get to, as a negotiating tool, is really difficult. I, I've, uh, will, will tell you that investors will often not want to even see it. We don't recommend doing it. Um, but we do recommend meeting with someone like Mike, okay, who has the experience and knows what's going out there in the, in the startup community what are the valuations that you're seeing? You know, we have a lot of that data just because of the deals that we see with our clients. So I, I would say it's informed guessing versus an educated guessing. It's a little, get education, figure out what's going on in the, in the community, in your space, what's your management team look like. I mean, you know whether you've got the experience of running a big company and whether you've got a successful track record or if the guy down the hall has a better record than you. You might think you know just because of things that have been written, but you don't always know. But sometimes perception is what the investors are really concerned with. It's kind of like um, bidding on a project. So if you know about what everyone else in your market is and you're talking to an investor who allegedly knows what's kind of going on in your market, you're not way, you're not an outlier in valuation you two by right. two low. I mean, if I'm an avid investor and I always, ha I've been invest, I invested in five companies this year and all of them were pre-revenue and they all had a pre-money valuation of two and a half million dollars and you come to me and you've got a $10 million pre-money valuation and also pre-revenue, why are you worth that much more? Well, you know, you've, you've got a management team that's, that, that blows everyone else away. That may be why or you're going into a market that is really unique and different and is going to be you know, the next 
Google or the next Apple. You, you just don't know. So the question is, are companies of not just early stage, but even later stage companies considering raising money under the JOBS Act? No. I, I see more interest in the emerging growth public route, a company that wants to sort of go public, but has sort of a five-year window before they have to comply with all of the Sarbanes-Oxley rules. Um, I see a little more interest there. We're seeing those sort of under the radar going public right now. I don't, I don't know that Kickstarter is something that today, not Kickstarter, that crowdfunding through the Jobs Act is something that companies really feel like they're going to want to do. I'm not seeing a lot of interest there because you are still going to have to spend some upfront money in legal and accounting. And um, you're going to need money just to do that. So I, um, I really, I, I don't see a lot of excitement about even from some larger companies doing it. Companies that are in business maybe two, three years, million dollars in revenue. I, I, don't, I don't see it. But we'll see. I mean, it, who knows when these rules will come about and, and if um, anything with respect to the election, I'm not sure. I, I don't know what the Republican versus the Democrat uh, perspective is on this. Uh, actually, I'm curious to see if, if they have positions. I don't know, has anyone looked to see if the candidates have positions on the JOBS Act? I mean, I would assume that the current administration is in favor of it because they passed it. Um, but what's interesting is the SEC is just dragging their feet on this legislation related to the crowdfunding, for sure. They don't like it. Well, on behalf of Hey Beferry Getting Win, I appreciate you guys giving me the time to come out here and speak to you. Thank you. Welcome.